uh, real briefly, uh, in 1974, um, my 18-year-old brother was involved in a horrific accident. I was in a, uh, a quarry, wiper quarries in Maryland here. And uh, I was at the bottom of a cliff, and my brother, 18-year-old brother, was at the top of a cliff. And he was threatening to dive off of that cliff. And uh, he was scaring everybody. And uh, in my fear and anger, I told him to go ahead, and he did. And he dove head first, and he uh, hit something at the bottom. And I said a prayer for the first time in my life at 20 years old, because I didn't have anything else to turn to. My prayer was, God, let him be OK. And I swam over and he was dead. The only reason I talk about that is because it messed me up pretty good. It did make me extremely angry uh, with a lot of things. And uh, as a result of that, in 1976, uh, while drinking, riding a motorcycle, I had an accident. I was given painkillers and they, they worked. They, they made me uh, feel uh, the way I wanted to feel, they got me outside of myself, they alleviated my resentments and anger, and, and so I was off to the races. And for 22 years, I used painkillers, and uh, that graduated to uh, heroin and cocaine and, and whatever I could get. I, I went out on like a final binger, and I really didn't care if I had lived or died at this point. I felt like I was spinning wheels in a mud puddle. I went in to get this prescription filled, and it was too early to have it filled, but the pharmacist took one look at me and called 911. In 1998, I was picked up off the streets. I was uh, in a coma. I was taken to a hospital in Baltimore. So they took me to St. Joe's where they had a uh, ICU unit for street people in the basement. And I said a prayer. I just said, uh, God, I'm done. If it's your will for me to go to hell, I'll go, but I won't live like that, like this. And uh, a nurse carried a, a baby in that ICU unit, and I just said a prayer for the baby to, you know, give the baby a, a good life, and I'll go wherever you want. Uh, thinking, of course, that <laughs> that I was going right to hell, and uh, all of a sudden I experienced God, and. Uh, I didn't know that, I didn't even know about the Holy Spirit. I didn't know that much about Jesus Christ. But all I did know is that all of a sudden I came up out of the coma. Uh, all my vitals came back and uh, it was an absolute miracle. At that time I also had this stuffed panda just because I had got my wife a little puppy the Christmas before. It was black and white so we named it Pandy because it reminded us of a small panda bear. So I had this stuffed panda with me to, to give to her and or in case something happened to me to uh, let her know that I was thinking about her. And uh, believe it or not, I heard a voice uh, tell me to give that panda to that baby I prayed for. So that's what I did. I called a nurse over and asked her if she could get that stuffed panda in my belongings to that baby and she had no problem with that and uh, within three hours I was released from that hospital uh, a miraculous miracle I got my hospital discharge papers from St. Joe's and what it reads is we found evidence of severe damage to your kidneys neburitis liver hepatitis and heart these problems are likely related to your drug abuse it is therefore critical that you quit immediately. And uh, I was to go to uh, a mental hospital and outpatient and to the anonymous rooms, which I did go to the anonymous rooms. I love them. And nine months earlier, in a stupor one night, I had read the Salvation Prayer and dated it and signed it. That was uh, September 9th, uh, 1997. When I came home, this new power that was in me which I know today to be God and the Holy Spirit, just stirred me to read the New Testament. And I read it. I read the whole thing in, in like 40 days. And I understood it. And it was only God. And, and the miracle, you know, some of the miracles in that is I had a reading disorder. I could not read. I had never read one book in my life. And all of a sudden, I could read the New Testament 
in 40 days and understand it. Little did I know at that time, hindsight is 2020. Little did I know that God had a plan for my life. And within a year, my wife and I were back together. Uh, I was doing all kinds of things in ministry and in uh, recovery and all those different things. And uh, the next thing I know, God was asking my wife to go to China. A seat opened up and uh, I was given the opportunity to go with her. I did and of course uh, once we were over there and worked with these kids uh, we fell in love and uh, we wanted to do anything that we could to help them. We got back home and, and we prayed together and told God you know if, if it meant selling the house or whatever we had to do uh, we wanted to do our part to help one of these. And uh, doors started opening. We got involved in the adoption uh, process. <laughs> it took three years uh, to go through that process. One, because of the, the SARS epidemic shut it down for nine months. In the meantime, 2005, uh, I got cancer and uh, had surgery and radiation. Learned how to surrender that and do my part, let God do his. And then we got the okay and we were going to China to pick up our little girl. And uh, that's what we did. So in 2006, we went and, and got our little girl. And uh, now she's six years old. She is the uh, precious angel of my life. And uh, it's been an unbelievable story, and it continues to go on. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping this gives hope to people. Uh, I do want to say that I am so for the anonymous groups out there. Uh, I know the great power that they have in, in those rooms. And uh, <clears throat> who knows? You know, I don't think I'm unique or special. And she's now in, what, kindergarten? Kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Kindergarten, and you love school. My teacher's name is Miss Johnson. Mm -hmm. And uh, God is good.